In this video, we will present the idea of the Prime Radiant. It is one of the most uncommon, rare, and even weird ideas, which is very challenging to grasp. Yet it is simultaneously one of the most beautiful and powerful. This point of view is for the first time presented by Bashar, and it is the essential building block of any technological, social, or spiritual development of his civilization called Essasani. Although the idea of the Prime Radiant might look abstract and surrealistic, if we spend a bit of time pondering upon it, we feel the most profound connection with life and receive inspiration for how we can apply it practically. Let us listen to how Bashar describes the Prime Radiant and see how we can apply this idea. Uh, what, what, how do you explain Big Bang, how it happened? The idea is what we call or refer to in our ancient language as the Prime Radiant. The idea being that really fundamentally, now again, this is just a euphemism in your language. This isn't meant to be absolutely literal, but it's the best analogy that can be translated into your language. You understand? All right. Well, let us back up, as you say. First of all, your scientists, many of them, now understand that the so-called Big Bang is not necessarily the beginning of everything, it's just the beginning of your particular universe, yes? Right. But infinity is infinity. And there are many Big Bangs, as you say, many cycles that occur within infinity. Many universes, what your scientists have come to understand as the multiverse. So really, there are many Big Bangs. But in terms of your particular universe and its so-called beginning, the idea is, again, as an analogy, as an illustration, imagine, if you will, that there is only one particle and nothing else. All right? If you wish to represent this as simply a tiny subatomic particle floating in a big, empty, infinite black void, that's all right. It will do for the purposes of the illustration, even if that's not necessarily literally true. All right. So. Now imagine that because there is only this one subatomic particle, it has absolutely nothing else to relate to, yes? Right. So there really is no gravity, there really is no sense of mass, there's really no sense of space or time, it just exists as a point of pure existence. Right. Thus then, it is capable of doing anything and everything imaginable. In other words, it can travel at infinite speed. Nothing holds it back. There are no laws of physics yet. You follow me? Yes. Thus, if you understand that that single particle can travel throughout that void, that big infinite void at infinite speed, then that means that particle can actually appear to be everywhere at once. Yes? Right. Thus, it can actually appear to be an infinite number of particles, even though it's actually only one particle. That makes sense. That's the Big Bang. Now, the pattern in which it did that, again, as an analogy, similar to the pattern of lines you see on the holotope across the room, the idea is that it will create that infinite speed pathway in a kind of what you would call a geometrically radiating form. Where it doesn't cross its path, it will be simply what you call well, almost emptiness. Where it starts to cross its own path, it builds up, in a sense, more and more densification and becomes something more akin to what you recognize as, as energy and then matter. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, the places where it crosses itself the most creates what you understand as the experience you call dense matter and what you think your universe is made of. But what your scientists are now beginning to explore is the idea that the majority of your universe is made up of dark matter, dark energy, that is highly invisible to you. That's right. Well, the dark matter and dark energy is where the single particle crosses its own path less. It isn't as dense, but it forms the majority of the material that makes up your physical universe. Because it only crosses itself a very few times in a very dense, way to create that small amount of matter, relatively speaking, that creates all the matter you can perceive in your physical reality. Right. Understand? Yes. And that's also what creates the idea you call gravity and all the forces. In that sense, it is actually interconnected because in a sense, it's like a web. And it is that web, it is the pathway itself, the geometric path itself, in a sense, that creates that connectivity 
the stretchability and malleability that you interpret as the idea of gravitational or electromagnetic or strong or weak nuclear forces. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. All right. So here is the question that uh, who triggered this movement for having an infinite space in an infinite... There is no beginning. Means what happened? Some existence, people are saying that God existence, triggered this... Uh, existence only has one quality, to exist. Uh -huh. Remember, time is subject to existence. Existence is not subject to time. Time is a creation within existence, therefore existence itself is timeless and has no beginning and no ending. It just is. It's just the now. But again, to use an analogy that works in your space-time framework, imagine this, that there is the one, the one that everything is, but in the state we call the one, there's no reflectivity, there's no self-awareness, it doesn't know itself. But because it does contain everything, it also contains the idea of that which it is, shall we say, not, so to speak. Thus then that creates the first separation, the first difference, the first reflection. Right. And as that first reflection explodes, in a sense, from the one that doesn't know itself, it suddenly knows itself. The first reflection, and the one becomes aware that it is all that is. And that is also, on that level, what is behind that expansion, behind that explosion. But the one is not subject to it. The explosion only happens from the perspective of all that is, which recognizes itself as the one, which knows itself as the one, which has the reflection, which sees a difference. But the one sees no difference. The one is just the one and doesn't know itself. And so there is no big bang in the one. The one is just existence itself, pure and simple. And the big bang happened in a sense when the one suddenly became all that is and knew itself as all that is and had a reflection of itself as everything that could it possibly be. Is anything triggered this or it happened by itself? The recognition is what triggered it. But again, you're speaking from within a linear space-time framework. There is no time in the one and no triggering in the one. Mm -hmm. So remember, it's not this or that, it's this and that. Within the idea of things that get triggered and things that have beginnings and endings, overriding that and containing that is simply existence, the one to which those ideas simply don't apply. So triggering can occur within the one, but the one cannot be triggered because the one just is. Doesn't know anything else. It's not subject to beginnings and endings. There's nothing outside of it. No beginning, no ending. Those concepts don't apply to existence. They don't apply to the one. They only exist within the one. If we assume that Bashar is right and everything is made not only from one kind of particle, but literally from the same particle, which crosses itself in an infinite number of configurations and in this way creates all kinds of diversity of elements and substances. This might lead to other very profound and empowering ideas. From a social perspective, this will reveal that we are much more connected than we ever thought. Not only are we connected, but we are the same idea expressed through different perspectives and in different ways. If we truly understand this, we could experience a different society based upon much more understanding, acceptance, tolerance, and compassion, inevitably transforming the political, economic, and all other aspects of our lives. From a spiritual perspective, we can remember that our nature is infinite and indestructible simply because we exist right now and because we live now. We will exist forever. There is simply no room outside of existence where we or anything else can go. And there is nothing outside the one or life. We can only change form, experiences, or state and cannot stop being. There will always be a sense of self which will continue forever.
From a technological point of view, we could approach this idea of the prime radiant by creating different innovations and prototypes, exploring the notion that everything is the same thing, but crossing itself at different rates and intensities, creating higher or lower energy potentials or potential differences which will allow us to generate electrical or mechanical energies in a new and sustainable way. One such device is the so-called flash matrix, also described by Bashar, which we will explore in depth in future videos. The flash matrix has been a subject of our research and improvement for the last three years, and it is time now to share with you the principles behind it, the exact way it is constructed and the current results it produces. It is very logical that to invent a so-called over unity device or mechanism, or to figure out the unified theory and make peace between quantum mechanics and general relativity. We will need to explore more and new ideas that unify, combine or integrate the different aspects of what we call polarities. The following video will explore the six ideas that will allow us to achieve that.